Hello everyone, my name is Brian and today's presentation will be about Markov chains. So before we start with what Markov chains are, we should start with a little brief history lesson. So to your left is Andre Markov, who you know Markov chains was named after because he discovered it. And he discovered it after doing some probabilistic analysis on a Russian poem by Alexander Pushkin. And then the poem is named not Eugene Wunjin, but something closer to Yegivni, Yegivni uh, Onegin, something like that. I'm not Russian, I don't know how to say it. Hopefully Sam can help me later. Okay. So essentially when he analyzed this poem, he was, um, he was taking blocks of vowels and consonants and then trying to determine if the previous states that he was parsing through determined uh, the current state that he was looking at. So if he saw a vowel and then the next uh, letter was a consonant, he did some probabilistic calculations to determine you know, like the next state. So what are Markov chains? Well, they're a collection of random variables that can visit various states by utilizing something called the Markov property. And what is the Markov property? It can also be known as memorylessness, which states that the probability distribution of the future state only depends on the present state. So you don't necessarily need to know the entire history at the point where you are. You just need to know up to a certain number. So if you have an n order, Markov chain, you only look n, block, uh, n states back. So a two-order Markov chain is only two words or two letters. Okay, and then Markov chains are usually determined through a transition matrix, as you can see to the right. So each, each element on the transition matrix is um, related to a state and a state transition. As you can see on every row, it adds up to one. So in every state, you have to eventually transi transition to some state. So for example, the top row, um, that first one would be just to itself. So you have a 10% chance of going to yourself. The second one is saying that first state has a 50% chance of going to the second state. And then the last one says a 40% to the third. And then. Um, one of the mathematical properties of a Markov chain states that eventually, if you go through a Markov chain enough times, every state probability converges to a fixed average value. Okay. So, actually, so with a transition matrix for a Markov chain, it takes up an n square space complexity. And if you were to do an n order uh, Markov chain, it would exponentially grow relative to n. But if you were to use a graph, this is what you would be dealing with instead. So if you ever to use a Markov chain, try to you know, determine, am I better off with a transistor matrix, or am I better off with having to deal with something like that? Okay. So this is a simple use case of a Markov chain. We have a weather model, as you can see. The top one will be sunny, cloudy, and rainy. That's the state. Transition probability. So what can we do with this? Well, let's ask a question. Oh, oops. So if it's cloudy today, what is the probability it will be rainy two days from now? So using our weather model, we can, we can create a transition matrix, as you can see to your right. And this is how you would calculate that question. So. We do our matrix operations, and then we square it for two days, and then the result gives us a 42% chance. So our weatherman can now say there is a 42% chance it will be raining in two days, if today was cloudy. But how can we relate Markov chains to web development? Well, let's say you have a web application and it takes up a lot of bandwidth. How can we use Markov chains? So this is a little iffy, but if, you were to allow, if your users allowed you to track your data, let's say like how much time they spent on one page or what pages they were visiting on the current state, you could take that data, feed it into a Markov chain, and 
can either load, lazily load or eagerly load your data depending on the current state. And this is one of the most famous examples of using a Markov chain in web development, which is PageRank, which is the algorithm that powered Google. That's Larry Page and Sergey Brin over there to the left, founders of Google. And that's just an illustration of what PageRank would be like. Okay. Okay. Introduced in 1998, PageRank provides a hierarchical order for the World Wide Web. Okay. So think of the web and all the links there as some sort of directed weighted graph where each, well actually no, just a directed graph at first. So each link directs to another web, right? And each node is that web page itself. PageRank takes a random walk, so essentially simulates a user going through each link, and then at any point, they can randomly choose to go to a different web page. Because the web itself is not necessarily a strongly connected graph, you could potentially get stuck at a page if it has no outgoing links or if some web page has no in incoming links, you can never reach that page. So this is why we do a random walk along this graph. And then after your calculations, you can determine a ranking of each web page according to how many times the user or the random user had reached that page over the entire operation. Okay. So what else can you do with Markov chains? Well, the possibilities are almost endless. But this is just a very small sample of what Markov chains are used in, in the real world. So we have bioinformatic analysis, where you take long sequences of DNA. And then through Markov chains, we can find certain sections of the DNA strand that correlate to certain things that we're looking for, like you know, protein models or something like that. We can also do it for spam filtering. Markov chains are used in something called CRM114, which is used by Microsoft Outlook. And then it takes in all your emails. And using Markov chains, it can detect up to 99.9% .9 accuracy if it's spam or not. Uh, speech recognition heavily uses Markov models. But a more stronger use is with hidden Markov models, which for sake of brevity, I will not be discussing today. Data compression also uses Markov chain. If anyone has ever used 7-zip in the 7-z format, they use something called the LZMA algorithm. And as you can see there, it has Markov in the name. So it must be very important, right? And also malware detection. Uh, for Android, there is a system called Mama Droid, which uh, takes a look at every API call used on an Android app. And it can eventually determine if that app is malware or not using mal Markov chains. Okay, so these are just some examples of what Markov chains are used in the real world. 7-zip, also financial systems. And these are more casual uses of Markov chains here. So to your left, we have something called Garkov, which generates random Garfield comic strips. So it takes in the entire uh, corpus of text that of every Garfield comic ever made, and it just you know generates random comics for you. Top le top right, we have a Donald Trump tweet generator. So it takes in all of his you know crazy tweets and just gives us you know even crazier ones. And at the bottom, we have something called subreddit sub subreddit simulator, which uses heavily uses Markov model chains. Uh, parses through a bunch of various subreddits, and it creates these bot accounts that generate uh, comments and posts that are similar to where they came from. But semantically, they do not make sense. Okay, so before I end, this would be a Markov chain most relevant to you guys right now, which is essentially a Markov chain in a lecture. So these are the various states that we have, which is you know relative to how much you're paying attention. And eventually, I guess you could get kicked out, but we wouldn't be doing that today. And that's it.